What up, people? Pushing Wild Black here, and I am not moving. I am uh, <clears throat> in an undisclosed location, and I am unshaven because it is Monday, and you can't go to the barber on Monday, and it is almost 1 o'clock in the morning, and I'm bored, and I can't sleep. So I just needed to get this out real quick. Um, <clears throat> and my phone is charging, so that's why I'm kind of sitting on the ground. Because my phone will die really quickly if I try to do this in a better spot without it being plugged to the wall. So anyway, um, I go to Walmart today. I had to pick up some things. You know, my almost every other day <clears throat> trip to Walmart when you don't have a car and you're running off of one backpack and you're shopping and stuff, you know, on the bus. So <coughs> I'm doing my thing and this girl and I should say lady because she's she's an adult she taps me on the shoulder and she goes have we met before and I was like and she didn't look familiar at first and I'm looking at her and I'm like no I don't think we met before and then she was saying like did I pray for you before now I was in my wheelchair as I tend to be when I'm out in public and I'm not with friends or family and I'm not on my walker like when I'm by myself and I'm traveling on the bus I'm in my chair so invariably whenever I'm out at least once a month or w once every two months somebody prays for me which I'm a Christian <clears throat> I get it I read I read the Bible I've read in the Bible where that uh we're supposed to do that. So we exchange pleasantries and stuff. We start like the first time she, she we met, it was sick it was strictly I'm gonna pray for you because I always pray for the sick. Not infirmed, because technically from a biblical standpoint, I'm infirmed, not sick. But she assumed that I was sick. So she's like, I always pray for the sick. I don't get mad about it anymore. I I used to feel some type of way, but I don't really get mad about it anymore because I get that's what we're supposed to do. I do have thoughts about that, though. People tend to want to pray for you to see a miracle, but they don't want to share the gospel. It's like it's weird because we're supposed to prophetize and share the gospel with people, but people want to tell you not about the Savior, but about the gift, but about a gift, a spiritual gift that you can get if you believe in the Savior. But they're not going to tell you about Jesus, but they're going to tell you about a gift. Especially, like specifically if you're disabled, you won't learn about the gospel, but you'll learn about a gift first. But I digress. So we exchanged pleasantries, and she was like, oh, I'm pretty, you, you probably get that all the time. I'm like, it, it happens at least once every two months. She's like, oh, but, I, but I'm a Christian, so I don't get offended. You know, I, I understand it. She's like, oh, I don't really want to offend people. And I'm like, you're doing fine. Like, I didn't want to correct her because she was young and she was zealous. And I'm not trying to kill people's zeal for the Lord. I will say this, though, and this is the point of this quick little, I guess, rant. I'm 34 years old. I got baptized when I was two years old. I got prayed for when I was, I, I got baptized when I was two years old. I got prayed for when I was two years old because I had a heart surgery. And my mom wanted me to get baptized and she wanted like, hands laid on me right before I went, I went into, <coughs> I went in, I went into surgery. So, and I got hands laid out on me when I was five scared the crap out of me because I didn't know what it was and when you have a bunch of when you're a little kid and you have a bunch of old church ladies speaking in tongues in the basement of your preschool or, or, the, or, or the head start program you're in the basement of where the head start program is you're in a Pentecostal like church you know like this is back in the 80s where like you know we killing demons and all this stuff so when you got that going on when you're seven, when, when you're five rather, when you have, when you go to vacation Bible school, because I grew up Lutheran, so I went on vacation Bible school. 
you know, every summer as a kid, when your mom discovers TVN, when when your because we always we always had church around us, and we always my mom was always a Christian and stuff, but she was really wasn't like deep into it. And then when I hit thirteen, <laughs> she discovers TVN, gets serious about the Lord. Um, get serious about the Lord, like real serious. So TBN, Daystar, <laughs> like three other Christian networks, local networks at the time, are around, and that's in the house. So from the time you're like 13 years old to the time I left college, and when I left college at 18 years old, I was going to to Christians, um, <laughs> to Bible talks, to Bible studies. I was going to church at Southern Illinois University. Everything was, I was in it. I'm in it. You know what I'm saying? I know about Jesus. I've known about him for the majority of my life. I've been in healing circles. I've been, I've been in healing circles at least twice. I've been anointed with oil once. Believe me, I know about Jesus. And I probably can quote scripture than a lot of you young Christians out there. And I'm not being boastful. I'm just, I'm just saying, I, I, I know who he is. I know what he's done. I became conscious of what the crucifixion really was at 13 years old. I didn't, I always considered myself Christian, but I actually understood what it meant at 13 years old. I have come to the realization that I might not be healed miraculously, divinely, of my cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is in the Bible. There's at least two, there's at least one instance in the Bible, the man with the withered hand, since birth. That's cerebral palsy. Because you know what a withered hand is? Withered hand is this. Or something this. So... When they're talking about the man with the withered hand, that's what CP is. The other two examples of what cerebral palsy is, or it could have been spina bifida, I don't know, is the man then got lowered into the tent where Jesus was and by his friends, and Jesus healed him. And the man by the pool, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't know the scripture, <coughs> the man by the pool where the angels came, and stirred the pool. I, I don't know the time frame, but the, there was an angel that came and stirred the pool. And then if you got to the pool, you got healed of whatever ailment that you got. And he couldn't get to the pool. And Jesus came and saw him. And he was asking for alms. And then Jesus said, do you want to be healed? And then he said, I'm, I'm trying, but I can't get to the pool. And then Jesus held him and told him to take his bed and walk. Take his bed up and walk. So being born with a disability and having a disability since birth is, is biblical. Okay? It's there. Jesus healed them, the, all <coughs> these people in these, um, in, in these circumstances, which is a wonderful thing. You can be saved and, and disabled. You can be Christian and disabled. You can be black and Christian and disabled. Can we please stop? Like, I know everybody means well, but especially the people that are out there in the field, like witnessing, witness the Savior first. Explain the Savior first before you explain the gift. Because that's the point. The point is to save somebody from internal damnation. The point is not to get that person to be, to, to be healed completely. Because I can tell you as a 34-year-old black man with cerebral palsy that have been in healing circles twice, that has been anointed with oil once, that has been, in, that has went to, has thought about going to, had thought about earlier in his life going to seminary school and seeing how people treat people with disabilities Christians treat people with disabilities and knowing about Justin Peters and how he lost his way for a minute and knowing about other people in my situation 
that were flat out embarrassed by churches and lost their way. And it was only from the grace of God that they found their way back to him. Stress the Savior, please, not the gift, because sometimes, as Paul says, as Paul says, my strength is in my infirmities. God told Paul, his grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Can we, can, when we talk about, when we talk about the Savior to disabled people, can we do that first? Can, can we explain <coughs> that aspect of Christianity first before you run off and you, and you try to heal the person? Because that might not, because the phys, a physical healing might not happen. But being saved and understanding that Christ died for, for your sins, that can happen. That's it. I'm done. Push a wild blackout. Later.